like to begin by using the prayer, the opening prayer for Mass for a feast day coming up on Monday, September 28th, which is the feast day of St. Lorenzo Ruiz. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us, we pray, Lord God, the same perseverance shown by your martyrs, St. Lorenzo Ruiz and his companions, in serving you and their neighbor, since those persecuted for the sake of righteousness are blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This week, again, I would like to emphasize or bring attention to the feast day on September 28th, which is, the, which is on this coming Monday. And it is a little bit of a shout out to my fellow Filipinos in the parish. Because on Monday, September 28th, the church will celebrate the feast of St. Lorenzo, Lorenzo Ruiz, who is the first Filipino to, have, to ever be numbered among the list of saints in our Catholic Church. His story has become an inspiration. Born in 1600 in, the, in a suburb of Manila, Lorenzo Ruiz was the son of a Chinese father and a Filipino mother. He was trained and taught by the Dominican priests and, and brothers who pastored the parish in which, in, in which Lorenzo was baptized and raised. The, that, that parish church is still stands in the same location to this very day. Lorenzo was very active in his parish both as a child and as an adult. He served in various capacities, but perhaps most important was as a scribe, namely being entrusted with the task of writing down and uh, writing down important documents for the parish. He also developed a strong devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and to the Holy Rosary. Later in life, he married a woman named Rosario and the two had three children. His family was not wealthy by any means and his family was, um, his family was among those of low status. At one point, Lorenzo was falsely accused of a murder. It was a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And since Lorenzo's low status among the ruling class of the Spaniards did not allow him to enjoy the privileges of those who were a higher class, he knew that he would not receive a fair trial, and he knew that his life was in danger. Assisted by the Dominican priests who, whom he had befriended, Lorenzo managed to Lorenzo managed to stow away on a missionary expedition. He had hoped to be able to escape from the Philippines for a while and then return after it was safer for him to do so. The missionary expedition was supposed to be bound for Macau, but ended up in Japan. In Japan, Lorenzo's life was again in unexpected danger. The Japanese emperor at that time was extremely unfriendly to foreign influences, most especially the Christian faith. And so any foreign missionaries that were caught were treated with even more severe cruelty. And so Lorenzo would find, out, find this out the hard way. And it did happen that Lorenzo and his compa companions were discovered, captured, and endured extreme torture before they were eventually martyred. There were, three tip, there were three tortures of particular cruelty. The first was a water torture, where buckets of water would, were poured down the throats of Lorenzo and his companions until they became bloated. And then the Japanese soldiers would jump on top of the wooden planks that were placed across their stomachs, which would violently push out the water from their bodies. Another torture involved long, thin needles that were inserted, uh, inserted in each finger right underneath the fingernails, running the length of the entire finger and extending beyond the edge. These needles were kept in place for long periods of time, and of course, their hand, the hands of Lorenzo and his companions would be immobilized to prevent them from removing the needles before the end of the torture period. 
The final torture Lorenzo and his companions were made to endure involved being fully bound and suspended upside down with the upper half of their bodies completely buried in the ground. To add to the pain, the temples of their head were cut, uh, were cut to increase the pain as the blood flow rushed to their heads. Throughout these tortures, the emperor gave Lorenzo and his companions the option either to deny their faith and save their lives or be killed. At one point, Lorenzo reached a point of weakness and was almost ready to give up, to, to give up his faith and give in to the emperor. But as he entertained that thought, he looked at one of his companions and who had denied his faith, and Lorenzo noticed that there was still a, faith, still a look of extreme anguish. But as Lorenzo looked at another companion who had not given up the faith, he noticed a look of peace and joy, even in the midst of such cruel suffering. That was enough for Lorenzo to, uh, to receive the strength he needed. And so when he stood before the emperor with one final chance to save his life, Lorenzo uttered the words for which he won the martyr's crown. He boldly told the emperor, I am a Catholic and will gladly die for my God if that is his wish. Had I a thousand lives, I would gladly give all of them up for God. Do with me as you please. With that, the order was given for Lorenzo to be uh, for Lorenzo and his companions to be to be killed. Their bodies were then bear, burned and their ashes scattered, so that the, so that they could not be venerated by other Christians. I share this story of Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, obviously because he he like myself is a, is a fellow Filipino. But I, uh, but I also, again, share this story on behalf of, uh, of, our, of our Filipino parishioners here at St. Julie's. And I'm doing so standing in front of the, uh, of the parish's icon of this great saint, which you can see behind me. This icon is enshrined in our Sacred Heart Chapel and was a gift from a Filipino parishioner. This icon also represents how St. Julie's and I were connected years before I even thought of becoming the pastor of our parish. About six years ago, Bishop Lou had reached out to me to see if I knew anyone who might be able to write an icon of St. Lorenzo Ruiz. He told me that a Filipino parishioner wanted to donate an image and an icon was the agreed style. Luckily, I did know of someone who was able to write the icon in the Eastern Orthodox style, which is again now this one in our chapel. It is the first ever icon of St. Lorenzo Ruiz. Actually, it is the second one because the smaller version I, I had made for myself, and the smaller version became the prototype that the, uh, that the, that the iconographer used to write this larger icon. And since Lorenzo Ruiz, there is now a second Filipino saint named Saint Pedro Calungsud, who was a teenager, teenager and a catechist who was martyred in Guam. I take this opportunity as well to share with the parish that the same donor who, don who commissioned this large icon of Saint Lorenzo Ruiz now desires to have a second icon, and, uh, but this time the icon of Saint Pedro Calungsud so that, it would, so that it, it would eventually be, be able to be enshrined next to St. Lorenzo. And so I, so I contacted the same priest who, who wrote this icon, and he has agreed to the commission. And so eventually we will have a second icon, an icon again of the second Filipino saint, St. Pedro Calungsud. It will take a while because the process of writing an icon is not, just, is not like any other piece of, work, piece of art. But both saints, of course, will inspire us to pray well and, to con and continue to teach the faith, to give witness to our faith, no matter whether we are Filipino or not, 
we are still called to give witness to our faith. And so may, there, may the example and life of St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and eventually as, uh, uh, when we welcome the image of St. Pedro Colomsud, may both of their lives again inspire us to give witness to our faith no matter what. For everyone's information, I just first of all would like to thank everyone who helped to make the Installation Mass last weekend a great celebration. From the Donut, Donut Sunday group, to our music ministers, to our altar servers, to everyone who was involved, again, please accept my deepest gratitude for making it truly a parish event. I know it was a little bit different because of the pandemic, but, it, but we were still able to join together and celebrate that moment. RCIA has begun. So if you or anyone you know is, uh, is in high school or an adult who is interested in becoming Catholic, please contact Tom O'Donnell at tom.odonnell9 at aol.com. Our faith formation program for youth will officially start next week. Please pray for our young children who will be nurtured in the faith by both our parish catechists as well as their parents. For more information, please contact our Faith Formation Office. On Tuesday, September 29th, we will have a special memorial mass for those parishioners who lost a loved one during the period of the pandemic when the parish was closed as a result of the pandemic. And so, as a result, these families were unable to have a funeral mass here at the parish for their deceased loved one. We wanted to give special priority to those families, but we should still have room for anyone else who might want to join. So please contact Marianne Mueller, or our coordinator of prayer life, if you would like to be included. On Saturday, October 3rd, we will have our annual pet, bl pet blessing at 2 p.m. The blessing will take place just outside of Mary's garden on the south side of the church. Please bring all of your pets to have them blessed. Again, if you have fish, you do not need to bring the fish with you or the entire tank with you for that matter. You only need to bring with you a small bottle of water which will be blessed at the pet blessing. And then when you get home, pour a little bit of that holy water into your fish's tank and then your pet fish will then receive the blessing. Please keep yourselves up to date about parish events by either visiting our website, our Facebook, or requesting a copy of the weekly bulletin. And for our closing prayer, a prayer in honor of St. Lorenzo Ruiz. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O oh God, look upon us humbly prostrate before you, you have, you have crowned with the laurel, the laurel of immortality of glorious martyrs, your servants, Lorenzo and his companions. Mercifully grant that through their merits and supplications, that living the life of our Christian faith, we too may merit to be crowned with them forever in heaven. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.